Hi, welcome to the Film Prop Channel. Today I'm going to explain about a 1987 action comedy film called Project A, Part 2. Please support me with a like and a comment. That way you can help the channel grow. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The pirates are carried ashore. They are broken and angry because they have lost some of their men. One of them says that Dragon Ma is to blame for everything. They swear on blood and hair that Dragon Ma will answer for what happened to them. Police Inspector Mr. Chun arrives at the restaurant, where men in suits are already waiting for him. The two guys from the restaurant run into the jewelry store and take the money and jewelry. The store owner falls to the floor from a heart attack while the guys escape. The inspector sees all this, goes outside and knocks out the scoundrels. The press runs up to him and takes pictures with the captured bandits. A cop comes on the scene and says the store owner is dead. Now the guys are going to be charged with murder as well. They are clearly not happy about this and run away. Chun shoots the first one and while aiming at the second one, he says he only took $300 like the inspector promised him, but no one hears this as he immediately shoots him after the first one. At the security meeting they discuss the case. They are trying to figure out how to fire him, since he is responsible for three districts at once. The admiral has one candidate for the role. A man who has successfully implemented Project A Sergeant Dragon Ma Yue Lung. The admiral calls him up the next day and makes him Chun's assistant. They will now work together. Will Ma be able to work with a corrupt inspector? The Admiral is sure he can't, and that's why Dragon Ma got the job. The girls hold a rally in the street, but when they notice the cops, they run away. One of the girls approaches Dragon Ma and asks to buy flowers in support of the revolution. Ma and his company buy flowers without a second thought. The policemen on the street see this and go inside to arrest the girls, they assume that Dragon Ma will be a witness in the case, but the sergeant saves the girls by saying that they are pen pals and put these flowers in their buttonholes to recognize each other. The police have nothing on them, so they leave. The girls sit down at the same table as the boys, while insulting the police. Dragon Ma says that he is a policeman himself, and the state relies on patriots like these girls. They embarrassedly leave, taking the flowers with them, but they are attacked in an alley by men. Dragon Ma and his partners rescue the girls and catch the guys, but they quietly let them go. Dragon confronts the injustice and asks to speak to the chief, but the cops take him to a room where they try to beat him with batons. But they don't know who they're dealing with at all. Especially in a room with a lot of underhanded objects. He masterfully scatters the fake cops and then pokes them in the face with a paper saying he's their new boss. They quickly change their faces, trying to get Dragon to like them. Everyone gives Dragon a gift and folds in money as a sign of respect to his new boss. Only one policeman does not. The dragon asks to be called to him when he has finished standing guard. He comes to Ma and says he takes it all as a bribe. Dragon notices that this policeman is the most honest of all and asks him about the unfinished business. He informs him of the details of the case of a certain tiger who holds everything in the area. The next day Dragon comes to the police station and gives them back the money he gave them, telling them that they will fight injustice in the brothels and gambling places. They quickly change their faces and say they will quit or take the day off. They are very worried about their own lives, afraid to stand up to the tiger who is upon them. The dragon instructs his colleagues to call in the marines. Tonight they must rid this town of the tiger. The tiger himself has dinner with the rest of the mafiosi, who are already aware of the dragon and his replacement Chun. The mob decides that dragon must be dealt with quickly so that he dares not interfere with their plans. The partners tell dragon that the marines are in training, which means they will have to do everything themselves. They arrive at the place where the mob is holding their talks. Dragon shows Tiger the warrant, but the mob only laughs, grabs the warrant, and spits on it. The sergeant leaves, but not to escape, but to get the civilians out. Now he'll deal with Tiger. The mob lines up in front of him, and one spits a cigarette in his face. A fight breaks out between them, with the mob assisted by the restaurant staff. The cops try to bluff and talk about squads waiting outside, but Dragon is not going to bluff and says they are alone here. A mob crawls at them from everywhere, like jackals at their victims. A big scramble begins on both floors of the restaurant. The cops have a hard time dealing with the mob, who ruthlessly toss the cops from side to side while Dragon Ma fights three at once. They beat the spirit out of him, but he still finds the strength to get up. Dragon climbs up the rope to the second floor and Tiger immediately sends four of them after him. They throw him down the stairs and Tiger puts his foot on his head. The marine soldiers run into the building. They take up combat positions on both floors. The admiral enters the building and says that these bandits are now completely in their power. The mob quickly change their faces and put their hands behind their heads. Tiger tries to say something about how if it weren't for his assistance, he would. Dragon doesn't want to listen to this nonsense and asks to release Tiger along with his sidekick, saying that if Tiger gets out of this building, he will be free. 
After a few minutes, Tiger flies to the ground from the second floor. The pirates, who have sworn on blood, have been waiting for news of the dragon and decide to raid him. Ma brings the mob to the station and orders that the scoundrels be put behind bars. Chun sees all this and pretends not to know Tiger, though he tries to contact him. One of the chief commanders gives Dragon money for new clothes and advises him to keep an eye on this Chun. The pirates try in vain to find some food, but they get nothing but basement rats. The revolutionaries, meanwhile, receive an offer from Chun, who promises to pay them a lot of money with which they could buy the necessary weapons. One of the members of the movement turns out to be a traitor and tells them all about their plans. The revolutionary women try to infiltrate the ball, which is guarded by the police. Dragon gets to know the girls and lets them in, even though one doesn't even have an invitation. Miss Pack gets to know the chiefs of staff. Dragon Ma watches the ball with his partners out of both eyes. Unfortunately for him, it is the night that the revolutionary women decide to steal the jewels. While they distract everyone, their accomplice sneaks upstairs and the girls pretend to go to the ladies' room. Dragon and the partners quickly sense something is amiss and spot the guy sneaking into the general's office. At this time, the girl herself and the general come into the office. Dragon fails to catch the revolutionary and he slips out of the office. Ma accuses the boy of stealing, but he is framed by planting a necklace pendant in his pocket. He's taken away, and only then does he realize that Chan and the girls did it all. After the ball, Yes and Cousin is kidnapped right on the street. Chung gives a bribe and asks to be rid of the arrested Dragon. Dragon and his partner go to the revolutionary's house while secret agents are hiding in it looking for revolutionaries. The Dragon goes to the bathroom, and a general comes into the house. Now they all try to hide in this cabin. The revolutionary, the agent, and the arrested Dragon Ma and his partner. The general decides to fix the plumbing in her house, and Dragon manages to free himself from his handcuffs because. Agents are holding the revolutionaries at gunpoint, and Chun knocks on the house to discuss the case. The general has to hide under the bed so that Chun does not see him. This is where they see each other and the general. They decide to raid the agents who are sitting on the second floor. The general hums a police song along with Yesen while Dragon discreetly knocks out the first agent and puts on his clothes. Together with the general, they intimidate the second agent, who is hiding in a closet. They arrange a hostage exchange, but the agent has no idea it's Dragon and finds himself in his crosshairs. The agent confesses that he works for the Empress Dowager and must arrest the rioters, and is ignorant of the law. Chun tries to stop them and takes him to the police station. Suddenly they are attacked by the pirates of San Pao and Chun tries to escape, but he is handcuffed to Ma and he has lost the key. Dragon helps the bumbling superintendent escape from certain death, and the chase moves on to the hotel, where they try their best to fight off the crazy kamikazes with axes. They throw them at the cops without a second thought, while the couple tries to fight them off with chairs. Finally, they are rescued by police backup. The revolutionaries almost get the job done and see Dragon being kidnapped, tied up, pushed into a bag and dumped into the water. The revolutionaries decide to help him, immediately guessing that he will be framed. The pirates slowly guess that Dragon Ma was just doing his job, not wishing them harm. Chun, meanwhile, negotiates new shady dealings with the agents, believing he has killed Dragon Ma. The revolutionaries convince the awake Dragon Ma to join their movement, but Dragon refuses the offer, though he believes the revolutionaries will succeed, he can never transcend the law, that is his way of doing things. The revolutionaries apologize for the necklace situation and say that it is in one of the books in that cabinet, and that it was all about money for weapons. Dragon listens to them and forgives them. They shake hands, as they both try to help people, but in slightly different ways. One of the pirates tries to buy medicine, but then Dragon shows up and pays for the pirate, trying to find out what he has wronged him and the others, but Dragon is distracted by a scream from the street. It's Yesen, being kidnapped by agents along with Chun. Dragon runs to back up the revolutionaries and is seen by Chun, coming to the shock of finding Ma alive. Dragon is beaten by Chun, along with another agent, and leads them to the room where the agent sits with the traitor to the revolution. Chun sends the hostages into the boxes, but Dragon tries with all his might to resist. The agents beat up Miss Pack, and Chun and the agents dump Ma into the soy sauce vat, and he is nearly killed by a huge weight on a chain that should grind him into mincemeat, but Dragon tries with all his might to survive despite the fact that they have poured oil all over the walls. Ma nevertheless escapes this trap and drops the traitor in his place. He raises a riot and the revolutionaries manage to get out of the hostages. The Dragon does his best to help the girls escape from the factory. At the end of the way they have to escape from the factory on a rope, and Dragon catches Yesen jumping off the roof. They run over to another roof, where both girls almost fall, followed by Dragon himself, but he picks them up from below and saves them from certain death. The girls give him the notebook and ask him to run. He is chased by incredibly strong agents and thrown off the roof right into baskets. 
He keeps running from the mercenaries and hides in a large aviary with birds, but the agents come running in there as well. Ma keeps escaping and almost gets drowned in the water, but he feigns death and escapes from the idiots. The dragon drops the notebook into a spinning birdcage and lures the agent there, but successfully takes the notebook away, leaving the mercenary in the cage. The chase is still on and Ma happens to notice some hot peppers, which he immediately puts in his mouth, chews up and spits this burning liquid on his fists. The agents can't even tolerate a few drops of this secret weapon. And so, he is left alone with the last agent, quite defenseless, but suddenly appeared pirates save dragon from certain death. The police arrive on the scene to arrest the agents, just as they have already managed to arrest the corrupt governor. Chun tries to escape punishment, but Ma won't let him go and runs after him. He tries to dodge, but finds himself in a big trap. The dragon drops a giant stage set on him and runs right off it. It lands on Chun, who forgot to grab his money from the floor, but it is his greed that causes him to get trapped by the structure. The exact same structure falls on Dragon as well, but he stands firmly in his place and passes through a thin layer of fabric, unlike his opponent. The agent commander tries to convince the general that his man and himself should be let go, as they were just defending themselves, but the general does something unimaginable. He beats him so that he falls to the floor and says that he heard nothing and knows nothing about it. Ma asks that the pirates be released and gives the revolutionaries their notebook. Dragon Ma orders everyone to disperse. There will be no more corruption in this city, and if the revolution does take place, there will be none in the whole country.